Thank you very much, uh, Gilbert. Thanks for the introduction. It's really an honor to be uh, invited to present again, especially with poets' deep uh, connections to China. And I wanna thank everyone who's listening um, for your interest in poet technologies. My name is Thomas Micah, and I'm the Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of Poet Technologies. Uh, please be sure to take a look at our filings for a full description of the risks associated with investing in our company. Uh, they're available on CDAR.com and on SEC.gov. We are traded on the TSX Venture Exchange in Canada and on the highest level of the OTC, the OTCQX in the United States. I only have 15 minutes to cover a lot of territory. So if we're unable to get to questions at the end, please contact me via the website um, and via email. Poet Technologies has made huge progress from one year ago, and we are entering the most exciting time in the company's history. Poet didn't just make a new product. It invented a better way of making many new products including products that people in our industry never thought were possible to make. So Poet is a disruptive force in the datacom and telecom markets, the same markets that make the internet what it is, providing video on demand, applications from Facebook, Instagram, Google, etc. Optical transceivers are the bottleneck in data transmission from the cloud to your home or office. In over 20 years, no company has been able to fully apply semiconductor technology to the making of optical transceivers until POET. POET has accomplished what even Intel has been unable to do. The POET optical interposer is a radical new invention that allows the integration of multiple devices onto a single chip producing what we call an optical engine. We build optical engines hundreds at a time, rather than one at a time, using the semiconductor technology and semiconductor equipment that has been perfected over decades. Our optical engines are small, so small they can fit on a dime and are small enough to allow us to put four in the place of where our customers, or sorry, our competitors, can only fit one. How does POET win? POET optical interposer platform means dramatically lower cost and less capital cost to produce the same number of units. Our capital cost is only 10% of what the competition must spend to, to create the same number of units. Poet's optical engines use less power, have higher performance, and can be scaled more quickly with large economies of scale. And the optical interposer can be used to increase performance and lower the cost of almost any application that uses optical fibers or photonics devices. And you would be very surprised to learn that photonics devices are ubiquitous in the world. I will go to the markets and our market potentials. The optical transceiver market is large, currently about $3 billion annually and growing to over $6 billion in 2025. We prepared a forecast for our joint venture company in China, which I will go into detail later about, that reaches $300 million in annual revenue in four to five years. Production volumes are expected to begin by mid-2022, um, uh, coming out of the, the SPX joint venture. There are many more markets, much larger markets, that need the Poet Optical inter Interposer. Broadly speaking, they cover communications, computing, and sensing devices. Not just datacom and telecom, but edge computing, artificial intelligence, computing, medical technology, wearables, and autonomous vehicles. 
are within our grasp. One key market that Poet will focus on next is health technology, including wearable devices, mobile and medical devices for point of care. Light can be used to measure everything from your heart rate to your blood pressure, to your blood oxygen level, or the level of carbon monoxide or alcohol in your bloodstream. We believe that POET's technology is key to unlocking new applications in healthcare. The market is huge compared to Datacom, estimated at a $48 billion TAM by 2025. POET's technology has several competitive advantages in such devices. Miniature size is the key to enabling apps for smartphones, smart watches, and other point of care devices. You have seen the size of the optical interposer. It will easily fit into a watch. No one else can produce a smaller integrated optical spectrometer, which is the device that's used to measure all of those bodily functions that's contained in a watch. Another advantage is our waveguides that are built into the optical interposer platform. They operate without any losses all the way from visible light to infrared, allowing POET to collect much more data than our competitors. So let's combine all the opportunities that we see in our target markets. They quickly add up to over 1 billion in annual revenue over the next five to six years. I'd like to show you some of the products and what our roadmap is. I've used the term optical interposer platform. Again, Poet didn't just make a product. We invented a better way of making many new products, including products that people in the industry never thought were possible to make. By platform, we mean that we reuse the features of the optical interposer and the tools for designing different variations of the optical interposer and the products, shortening the development process and allowing the launch of multiple products simultaneously. We also have the only integration platform in the world for a certain type of laser called DML, which POET can use to extend to 400G by just changing out the lasers on our 100G and 200G products. 400G is an emerging um, speed for data transmission in cloud data centers. And we believe with DMLs, we will have a, a very, very competitive product. POET is already supplying samples to customers. With some minor tweaks to the alpha samples, we will be producing beta samples in early 2022. Beta samples are the ones that customers use for reliability testing, a process that we call qualification. After that, we go into production. If you look at our presentation from last year, you will see that we are delayed from our original plan by about a quarter. That's because of the semiconductor shortage and the disruption of the supply chain that every company has experienced. So we're not far behind and we're no worse off than other companies. We formed a JV company in Jamen with Sanan about a year ago. Today, the company has 25 employees, is fully equipped producing sample optical engines that are going to customer. Sanan Optoelectronics and Sanan IC, their subsidiary, are ideal partners for POET. Sanan is the largest compound semiconductor company in the world. And compound semiconductors are what use, are used to create light and to manip manipulate and detect light. We used the China International Optoelectronics Exhibition, the CIOE, which is the largest such, such exhibition in the world to introduce POET to the China market. This was done last September. Dr. Mo Jinyu gave six product demonstrations to over 60 C-suite executives and executive staff 
of over 20 leading companies. At the exhibition, we signed up two customers and collected over 10 requests for samples. It was really an astounding success for Poet and for Dr. Mo, our Senior Vice President of Asia. Currently, we have targeted over 35 potential customers and business partners. We are in active discussions with over 20, more than 10 have requested samples, and we are finalizing development project plans with six. We have four committed customers and we expect many more over the next several months. Remember, we've been in development for four years. So after four years of development, we are finally beginning to deliver real samples into customers' hands. And that's what most of our customers have been waiting for. Just a brief uh, discussion of our operations. We have a world-class management team and world-class engineering talent led by Dr. Suresh Venkatesan, former CTO of Global Foundries, and Vivek Rajgaria, formerly with Maycom, Optimi, Lucent, and others. He's a real expert in the optical industry. Poet is headquartered in Toronto with operations in Allentown, Pennsylvania, Singapore, and Shenzhen. Our main business partners are Solterra in Kulin, Malaysia, and of course our joint venture, SPX in Xiamen, China. Thought I'd spend a minute on our capital structure. Uh, as of uh, the end of September, we reported 20 million in cash. I believe we just reported uh, yesterday in a press release that we have about 24 million in cash. Our cash burn is about $1 million a month. Uh, we have a capital structure that includes about 350, a little bit over 350 million total shares outstanding, 443 fully diluted shares. And we have both warrants and options um, that are in the money. The number that's reported here at 42.8 is lower today because since this deck was created, we exercised, or that is our warrant holders exercised about 4 million additional uh, warrants. Sorry, $4 million worth of additional warrants. So why invest in Poet now? First of all, we have technology that's been proven out by leading companies. We have a first rate management team with com public company track records. We have a totally disruptive technology applying to large uh, and known markets with huge potential. We're now commercializing after four plus years of development. We're not very well known outside of Canada. In fact, we're probably not that well known inside of Canada. And um, so I think that uh, because we trade only on the OTC in the US, it hasn't been able, we haven't been able to attract as many investors as we would like to. Although we're not known, we will be soon. We have a solid large company partner in China and an investment in the JV. The plans for the JV are to grow it and eventually, possibly, to take it on public on the starboard in a few years. And we're expecting soon to be on the NASDAQ, which in my opinion itself will increase our share price because of the larger investor audience that will attract. And I believe, uh, Gilbert, that I have an additional five minutes for any questions that may come from the audience. Great, Tom. So let's uh, go to the first question here from Alan. He says, uh, you can comment on what's the latest news from Super Photonics? Have you heard from that? Yeah, well, Super Photonics, Jamen, is our joint venture. And um, even we signed the agreement la about a year ago. And that company now has 25 employees, is fully equipped. Um, with the equipment that we need and is assembling and testing sample optical engines as we speak. And the next one coming from Elena. So your company is quite unique in niche markets. So any comparables out there in the market? 
I would say actually our company is in pretty large markets um, as opposed to being niche markets. Um, there, there are a couple of comparables. Um, apart from the Intels and Cisco's of the world, uh, Intel is, I think, the leading company in, uh, in the production of modules. There's another company in China called InnoLite. Um, but a comparable to us in terms of our stage of development would be a company called Rockley Photonics, which just went public um, through uh, a DSPAC back a few weeks ago, and I think is um, valued at over $1 billion US. Okay, so next one coming from Sarah here. Zach is asking in, uh, in three years time, what's your expected percentage of sales that are coming from China? That's a good question. Um, for our customer base basically uh, bifurcates into two parts. Uh, one are the module makers in, that are primarily or almost exclusively in China these days. They, they manufacture the pluggable modules that we've been talking about in terms of optical transceivers. And um, those are standard products that um, where we will be producing the optical engines, uh, SPX will be producing the optical engines and selling those to customers in China. Poet Technologies is really focused on the more advanced um, applications in the market, 400G, 800G. Um, there are, there's an interest in um, 1.6 terabits for so-called co-packaged optics, which is the communication within the switch uh, box uh, in data centers. And so, um, you know, I, I would hope that that revenue is, uh, is about 50-50 uh, in two or three years, but it, I wouldn't be surprised if during the next couple of years, most of the revenue was generated in China. Okay, so last question here every year from Pascal here. With such an innovative and versatile technology platform, when do you expect to be break even? Uh, I, I think that um, that is probably a couple of years out, at least. Um, you know, one aspect of a, of a growing technology company that I've experienced over my career is that technology companies typically, you know, need capital to grow and to grow into, into new markets and new, um, new applications. You can see we have a broad range of markets that we could attack. Um, right now, we're really focused on optical transceivers. Uh, I expect that if we were to, um, as, as we move to the wearable medical devices, that's going to require another level of, of, uh, of investment by POET. And so far, our shareholders and investors have been um, not only patient, but willing to, uh, to invest in our company. Thank you, Tom, for answering all the questions here with us. Thank you again for sharing your updates with us. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.